we'd like to welcome you to Gateway Family Church, where we believe that God has something specifically just for you. So we would like to invite you to come as you are and worship with us. Worship, we're going to dive right in tonight, guys. And there is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. There is power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain, to break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Don't sufficient sacrifice to freely give. Such a price for all redemption, heaven's gift. So why? There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is power. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. To break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. Break every chain, break every chain, break every chain. 
God, we just lift up Gregory in his hospital room right now, God. We cry out for that boy tonight, God. Come on, just lift your voice and begin to pray. Father in heaven, God, we plead the blood of Jesus over that boy. Peace, God, we pray peace into that room, Lord. presence fill that room God tonight because nothing can stand against your presence God what can stand I want to keep praying
Shut up the guy with the voice of triumph Shut up the guy with the voice of praise Shut up the guy with the voice of triumph We lift your name up, we lift your name up Shut up the guy with the voice of triumph Thank you, Lord. We thank you for the victory, God. Your enemy's been defeated, and death can hold you down. Gonna lift our voice in victory. Gonna make your praises loud. Your enemy's been defeated, and death can hold you down. It's our voice in victory Gonna make your praises out The enemy's been defeated Come on, lift your voice Death couldn't hold you down Let's give him a shout of praise here tonight for the victory, God. We thank you for the victory, Lord.
King of kings, Lord of lords, you are holy. Father, we have come into this house to magnify your name, to exalt you, the living God. Father, for no other reason do we come but to honor you and to love you. And you alone are the life giver, the healer, the very reason we live. You are our breath, the very substance of our being. And we thank you, Master for the great work of the cross, the finished work, what you did for us on Golgotha's hill. And Master, I ask that you bless your beloved that gathered together this night, that you would touch each and every one. And I thank you, Father, in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So glad you came to church tonight. Oh, we're going to celebrate, aren't we, tomorrow, the, the 4th of July. And, you know, uh, Pastor Greg and Melissa have a great celebration tomorrow because that is the day Gregory's getting his new cells. And so here's what we need to pray. We need to pray that uh, they met with uh, Pastor Greg today, all the staff, did, the doctors and the nurses, and, and they said that uh, when they get the, the new cells, that they, they said that if they take, he'll get sicker. And, um, and, you know, Pastor goes, well, how can he get any sicker? So we, but they said, that's a good sign. I'm like, okay, that's a good sign. But so we need to pray that those cells take and that he, we will see resurrection power flow through him and we will see him whole again very quickly. Uh, this has been too long and we need to see the miracle working power of God. 
Melissa was reading me a prophecy today from uh, Kim Clement when he was here. Was it last year he was here? Uh, when he was here, and he said that he saw Greg in a high, tall building overlooking the city. And he has been there for two months in the high, tall building looking over the city. Isn't that amazing? But he also said good things, too, that everything would be fine. So we hang on to that word. You know, if you get a, if you get a word from a prophet, hang on to that word. Don't let it go. A true, a true, genuine prophet of God, you can hang on to that word. And if it might, sometimes it takes a while. But if you wait upon it and you confess it, it will surely come to pass. Isn't that right? Now, now we, ha we have a preacher lady here tonight. And you know, Thelma, you, you just out-preached yourself the other day. I mean, Jerry heard her. What, did she, was she preaching? My goodness. You just preached. Her, her brother uh, passed away and went home to be with Jesus. And we were at, a, we were at the funeral Saturday. And uh, Thelma gets up and starts preaching to everybody. And I mean, was that a sermon? I wish we had that on CD. I'd like to hear it again. Wow, my, my son Tony and Jerry said, wow, <laughs> was that amazing? You're just going to have to come preach for us some night. Wow, she's got the fire of God on her. <laughs> Hallelujah. And, you know, eight, she had an agenda. Had a whole bunch of family members. Uns she didn't want to miss an opportunity. Yeah, hallelujah. Well, eight got born again. Plus, we don't know how many didn't stand up. So, uh, no telling at a funeral. So, how about that? That's the way to do it, isn't it? Yeah, amen. Uh, we're going to give unto the Lord and bless him tonight. The Bible says in Psalm 35, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. Let them say, let the Lord be magnified continually who takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. So I would say if I am a servant of the Lord, I can, he takes pleasure in my prosperity. So come on, Lord, I want you to take a lot of pleasure in me. <laughs> so tell the Lord, you said you want to take pleasure in my prosperity. Come on, Lord, prosper me so you can take pleasure in me. And he also said, we've read that before, he loves a joyful giver. He will make all the grace abound to you. He will increase the fruit of your righteousness that you may have more to give. And so we don't give grudgingly or necessity, but God loves a cheerful giver. If you sow, you will receive. And it says to sow, don't look, don't look at the, the clouds because... If you look at the clouds, you're not going to give, says the book of Ecclesiastes. So we need to look, not look at that. Just look to our God and his word and what he says and know that if we continually sow, that we will eventually reap a good harvest. So some of us, you know, we're, we're in different seasons of our life. Some of us are in the overflow stage. And you know what it says in Mark 4, there's 30, 60, and 100 fold. So it's up to us how we sow that we get back. And if we continually believe God's word and confess God's word and don't pull up our seed, because a lot of times we pull up our seed by saying it's not working and it's not coming to pass. And so what we've sowed, that, that just pulled up that seed. You need to repent over it and confess the word again over that seed and believe God. Thank you for joining us in today's service. If you would like the opportunity to give, go to gatewayfamilychurch.com. Then click on the tab About Gateway. There you'll have the option to give online, where you can have your opportunity to give your tithes and offerings conveniently online. Hi, I'm Brad. And I'm Amy. Welcome, Welcome to, to Gateway, Gateway Family Church. Church. If you enjoy meeting and greeting and would like to be a part of the greeting team, then sign up on the clipboard that's being passed during the service. We need greeters for all our services. This includes our Sunday services at 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., and our Wednesday evening service at 7 p.m. So get plugged in today and make a difference in someone's life by expressing the love of God. Sign up today. You'll be glad you did. No doubt about it. Don't miss Ken Henry on Sunday, July 7th. This summer, Gateway is introducing a brand new summer worship series. Be there for this powerful worship experience. 
Join us this July 7th as Gateway welcomes Kent Henry for a night of worship. See you there. Craig, do you know what's going on July 14th? You mean besides my birthday? Oh, that's right, it is your birthday. I know. Well, the church is having a church picnic on July 14th in Wilson Park at Granite City. For me? A surprise birthday party for me? Sure, Craig. For you. Oh my gosh, I didn't think you guys remembered. Well, we did, Craig. Happy birthday, keep it a secret. I will. And at 7.30, make sure to bring your swim trunks because we get the swimming park as well. Oh my gosh, I am so excited. Awesome. But don't forget to register at the Welcome Center by July 7th so we know how many people are going to be there. So, uh, Craig, how, how old are you going to be? Uh, Craig? Craig. Men, Saturday, July 20th is the men's barbecue. It's going to be running from noon to 2 p.m. and men of all ages are invited. If you plan to attend, please bring a side dish. The church is going to provide the meat and the drinks. And we'll see you all there. It's been six months since Christmas. Are you craving all those Christmas cookies? Do you have a favorite cookie recipe that you would like to share? Join us on July 22nd at 7 p.m. for a night of sampling cookies. Bring a batch of your favorite Christmas cookies and copies of the recipe to share. Come out for a night of eating cookies, sharing recipes, and as always, fellowship with your favorite girlfriends. We just want to say a huge thank you for all the donations that have come in support of our missions effort in Honduras. All the donations have been such a huge blessing. People have been touched and lives have been changed, and it's all because of your generosity. Right now, the Honduras prison ministry is in great need of hygiene products, shampoos, soap, deodorant, toothbrushes and toothpaste. So we have a box located right in the foyer where you can bring all of your donations. And we would just like to thank you again for doing your part and being the hands and feet of God and reaching out to the nations. If you want any more information on this month's announcements or any future events, please visit us at gatewayfamilychurch.com. Nice. So anyway, <laughs> just a work in progress. If you have your Bibles, turn to the book of Second. <laughs> We're all a work in progress, aren't we? We're all a process moving toward a desired result. We're just moving that way. We're all a work in prog process, progress. We're just working that way. Yeah. Well, we start at Sunday night. Uh, talking about fear, and we're going to continue it for the, the month of July, and I believe Pastor Greg will probably be here next Wednesday night preaching. He was coming tonight, but his mother couldn't come and relieve him, so she had to change her plans, so he had to stay there. So we make sure there's a family member there at all times uh, to sit with Gregory. And, and, and Greg is such a wonderful daddy. He's like, he's there just hovering over him, watching over him, and uh, Melissa and I, it's been amazing. Every night it seems like both of us wake up around 2 to 3 o'clock and we pray until 4 in tongues in our bed. Now, she got up last night and prayed, but I usually pray in bed. And we've just been praying every night. The Lord has us pray in tongues those two hours, two and a half hours. So don't forget to pray tomorrow. But a spirit of fear is a terrible thing. If, if you haven't been through what we've been through or, or what Cheryl's been through with Kevin or are what we've been through with Gregory. Uh, fear will come and try to attach itself to you. It's a feeling of dread, apprehension. And it's a, it's a terrible, terrible spirit that comes. And all of us in one way or another have fear. You, you can say, well, I don't fear anything, but let something come your way and you'll see how quick that spirit of fear will come. Maybe it's a, a threat of losing your job, that you have a fear of job, or, or, or like when you get to be our age, you know, not having money to retire on, or, or you know, just fear of losing things, or fear of sickness, or, 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 or fear, there can be all kinds of fears. People have fear of animals, or, you know, just all kinds of things. 
Now, Greg and Melissa's dog, Gideon, everybody has a fear of that dog. Because if, if you're a visitor, he comes and bites you in your hiney. And it's not a pleasant experience. So not hard, but just enough to let you know that you don't belong around their yard or around our yard. And, but every morning he waits on me because he knows he comes to my backyard. And uh, he's a very big dog. He's a mastiff. Is that what he is? A mastiff. And, and you know they drool. They have this horrible yuck coming from them. I, oh, it's just horrible. And he's at the porch, and every morning he's waiting on me to come out because he knows I'll find food for him. And so he's at the back door drooling with all this stuff. And I'll open the door, and I'll say, hold a minute. I'll find you something. And no matter what I can find, I take it to him. And he's so happy when I get it to him, and he'll drool some more. But a lot of people have a fear of Gideon. And there's just all a fear of bugs, you know, a fear of, of tornadoes. We've been through enough tornadoes that, that a lot of people have fears of that or fear of earthquake or just all kinds of fears, fear of, of, of being robbed or our fear of fire or whatever it may be. So we all have fear, but the Lord does not want us to fear. He does not want us to have any kind of fear. When Melissa was a little girl, uh, when she, she was born, she was, she was very tiny and very sickly all the time. And we weren't serving the Lord then. And I had, we really didn't have the faith of God because we weren't serving him. And I was uh, born again as a child, but got away from the Lord. And at 10 months old, she only weighed 10 pounds. And you can't imagine how little that is. And no doctors could find out what was wrong with her. No matter where we'd take her, they didn't know what was wrong. And she was always sick with something. And I had such a fear that I, I, I was afraid that she would die and wouldn't live. And that was a terrible fear to live in. And I know she's going through some of the th same things with Gregory. When you see him so ill and everything that he's going through, and you look at your son like that, and the horrible fear that will try to wrap itself around your heart. But God has given us a way to fight that fear. So 2 Timothy uh, chapter 1, verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Now, if God has not given us a spirit of fear, who has given us a spirit of fear? The enemy has. So fear is from the devil, and we read very plainly right here that it is a spirit. So fear is a spirit. All fears come with a spirit. And we have to know that we are fighting a spirit when we have fear. And so God, but that is not from God. He has not given us a spirit of fear. There is an anointing that comes with a spirit of fear, and that anointing that comes with it is a dread, an apprehension. It grips you in your very heart. There is a pressure. I don't know if you've ever had a fear like that, but it's a pressure that gets upon you, and it's a weight of heaviness. It's, it's even a, a, a sickening. I know when I was in the hospital uh, quite a while ago when several doctors came, into me and came to me and they told me, I mean, Don, you were there, weren't you? And they said that you have uh, tumors in your pancreas. And I knew when they told me that, that immediately, unless God would heal me, that meant you were going to die because pancreatic cancer is an a, a immediate death sentence. And, you know, it was an amazing thing, but when they told me that, I did not fear because I knew what the Word said, that fear is a spirit, and I cannot fear. With Gregory, I have, and of course, God healed me before I left the hospital of that, but thank God he did. And, uh, but with Gregory, that spirit of fear has tried to attach itself to me quite often. And I've had to rebuke that spirit of fear, and I've had to turn the picture from seeing him how he looks now into how he looked before, and to believe God that he will be in that state once again and very quickly. So we have to fight that, that spirit that comes. You know, fear is an empowering of the devil, of Satan. It's straight from Satan, and it's in an empowerment from Satan. And we don't want anything Satan has to give us, do we? We don't want anything with his gifts, his assignments. We have to know, we have to fight that with everything within us because it's not from our God. Let's, let's turn to um, Romans 
at chapter 8. And we see we read this Sunday night, but I wanted to go over just about two or three of these basic scriptures. In chapter 8, verse 1, it says, there is there, it is there, therefore now, no condemnation to those which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. So there is a walk for the Christians to do. If we are a born again Christian, which all of us are tonight who live in here and, and that live this life, we are to walk after the spirit and not after the flesh. Why? Because the flesh lies to us. Our flesh does not always tell us the right thing. Our, our flesh is, is a liar a lot of times. And if we always go by our feelings, we're going to fail. So the Bible tells us here that we need to walk after the Spirit. And if we walk after the Spirit, the Spirit is a spirit of life, a spirit of victory, a spirit that will lead us and guide us into all truth. And what is truth? The Word of God is truth. You can read uh, uh, Second and Third John, and it talks much about the truth of the Word of God. So if we walk after the Spirit, we're walking after truth. But if we walk after the flesh, we're going to fall. We're going to give in to the Spirit, that spirit of fear. And we do not want to give in to that Spirit. And verse 2, for the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So there's a law of Spirit of life. There is a law. There's two basic laws that operate upon the earth today. There's the law of the spirit of life, increased Christ Jesus, and also there's another one which has made me free from the law of sin and death. So there is a law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, and there's a law of sin and death. So it's up to us as a Christian. Being a born-again Christian doesn't necessarily mean you're going to live under the right law. My dear grandmother who lives with Jesus now, she didn't live under the right law. She lived under the law of sin and death because she continually confessed what Satan told her. Continual confession of that. And it was just, she was afraid of everything. She was afraid to drive a car. She never drove a car. She was afraid to go in a store by herself. She, she was afraid of everything. And she's the one that took care of me. I'm not surprised that I had such a spirit of fear upon me. She would always confess that when she lit the gas pilot light on the stove all those years ago, you young people don't know what that's like, but she'd roll up a newspaper and light it with a, a match and then stick it into the pilot thing and light it, and it would go, Whoo! and she'd say all the time, one of these days that's going to blow up in my face. And it did. And everything she confessed bad happened to her. And she just lived in fear, so she chose to live under that law. It's up to us to choose the right law to live under. I want to live under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. So if I live under the spirit of life, what am I living? I'm living, living the God kind of life, the victory life. I'm living the word life. I'm living a life in, with an, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit to set me into that place of victory continually. So I must choose what I'm going to live under. The one law is, is dominated by faith, and the other law of, is dominated by fear. So I want to live in the law of life that's dominated by faith. I live in the faith of God who died for me and gave himself for me. Galatians 2.20. God gave himself for me, and I live in that law. But if I choose to live under the, that, that law of death, that law of fear, that's what I'm going to live in. So I want to choose the right one, okay? So we need to make that decision tonight with those two basic laws that are in operation. What, what is a law? A law is an established principle that works the same way every time. So if I'm going to live in that law, it's going to work the same way every time. That law of fear, that, that ter ter horrible degradation, that spirit that will come on me and attach itself to me. I want to step out of that fear. I don't want to live in that fear. In Matthew, let's look at that. For every spiritual force, we have to know that there is another force operating. If there's life, there's death. If there's health, there's sickness. And poverty, there's richness. Everyone, there's a reciprocal. 
and it's up to us to choose which one we want to live in. Like uh, the spirit of fear, what comes with that comes despair. Also, selfishness comes with that spirit. Did you know that? Selfishness comes with that spirit of fear. And the spirit of life comes hope, comes peace, comes joy, happiness. We just, we're filled with the life of God. And it's our decision what we're going. If we're always looking for the bad, you will find it. If you look for the bad, you're going to find it. If you look for the good, you'll find that too. So I want to look for the good continually. I want to look for the good in somebody. I don't want to look for the bad. And you might have somebody that just drives you wild, that may, maybe it's a boss that, that is so mean to you that you just don't like. Well, start praying for that boss and looking for the good in him or her. And you've got to find something. I don't know what it might be, but there's something that you can find good. You can find something good in everything in this life. So look for the good. We see here where the disciples, we read this Sunday night, so I'm not going to read the whole thing, where they were asleep and, and the waves started coming and they were covering the boat. And if you've ever been on a boat where the waves are covering it, it's a scare, that's a scary thing in itself. We've been on a ship before, haven't we, honey, that was rocking and rolling. And I did not like it too well. Did you? I don't think I want to go again. <laughs> and it was rocking and a rolling. And, you know, and of course, fear comes with, at you when that ship is doing that. And the waves were going over the top of the ship. And it, it was just a, a terrible experience. And the storm finally came to an end. And they said, now we're going to put you on little boats. And you're going to get in the middle of the ocean on these little boats. And we're going to take you to a little island. And when you get to that little island, you're going to be able to sit on the beach and have a picnic. And so they let us down. We ship stopped. They put an anchor in the middle of the ocean, and we could see the island, which was, what, about five miles away or so? Not that far? Okay. You probably know, honey, because you know all things. <laughs> he keeps me straight all the time. Um, so anyway, we, we could see it, so it wasn't that far away. So they put us in, in the ship, and the waves are really big, and so little boats, so we're riding there to this beach, and we get to this beach, and all excited to see the beach, all excited. We're going to be on a beautiful beach, and we get there, and it's about from here to here, the beach is, and it's all mud, no sand at all, and they have a few little tacky beach chairs set up, and, and there was about 100 of us, you know, and not everybody could sit on one of the little beach chairs with the mud. And then they had a picnic area with some ping pong tables that was all mud. And, and they had men there with uh, blow-up medical gloves, blown up on a stick, fanning the food. And all the flies were hovering over the food. Hundreds of thousands of flies every place. They were sitting on the food. And it was just a horrible, horrendous thing. And so we didn't eat any of the food. We didn't sit on their mud beach. And we couldn't get, wait to get back to this boat. And then they said there's going to be a movie night. And we were all excited because we were so bored. And so we got all excited. And we went to the movie. And they handed us a little thing of popcorn. And they had the Pink Panther on a little television set. <laughs> and we sat there, <laughs> and we're like, this is pitiful. <laughs> and, and we were on a Benny Hinn cruise, you know. <laughs> we're like, okay, Benny. <laughs> so you can find something good in everything. So they called to Jesus. They went to Jesus, and they woke him up. He was asleep at the bottom of the ship. Jesus was sleeping through the storm. He wasn't even worried about it. He was sound asleep as the... The boat was rocking and a rolling. They woke him up and they said, Master, don't you care we perish? Of course Jesus cares where you are. He doesn't want you to perish. He cares. And you know what he said to them? Verse 26, listen to this. And he saith unto them, Why are you fearful? Don't you know I'm always with you? Don't you know I'm but a prayer away? I'm here with you. Why are you fearful? And then he said a horrible thing to them. Oh, ye of little faith. 
So if I'm in fear, I have to know from this scripture right here that fear is a force, and I don't want that force to grab a hold of me with its icy fingers, and I don't want my God to say, oh, ye of little faith, why do you fear? So we don't want to fear. We want to have hope in, the, in our life that we have hope in Jesus and we can rest in him. And then in, in Romans 10, we read that also, and then we'll get to where we should be tonight. In Romans 10, verse 17, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes. If we pay attention to Satan's words, it brings fear. If we give place to Satan's words, we get a hold of fear, and we will live in that. We must take a hold of the word of God and cast fear far from us. If we get sick, we have to know what the word of God says. It says he will heal us. He will satisfy us with long life. I've been confessing that continually over Gregory. You will satisfy him with long life. You will show him your salvation. So we have to get rid of that spirit of fear, and we have to know how it operates. And if we know how something operates, it's real easy to take it, a hold of it and cast it from us. Now, let's turn to Proverbs uh, chapter 18. I have found out that fear and faith each have a team working for them. And so fear has a team, faith has a team. And it's up to us, like I said, what team we're going to operate in. The law of life, faith energizes it. That's the law of life. A negative, a fear is negative and the law of death operates in that. Now let's read verse uh, 20. A man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. And with the increase of his lips shall he be filled. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. And I know you know that scripture. So fear, when we speak it out of our mouth, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So if we continually speak what Satan is putting in our heart, which he will first to put it in our mind, and then when we meditate upon it, and we meditate upon it, and we speak it, and we rehearse it, and we live it, before long it gets in our heart. So that word from the enemy will get in our heart, and it will become a word that will bring fruit. So we have to take authority over what the enemy is putting here first. And we have to start speaking the word of God because it says a man's belly shall be satisfied with the fruit of his mouth. So if I speak fear, if I speak it continually, if I speak disappointment, if I speak hurts, if I speak what somebody has done to me, uh, I, I was very hurt one time. A friend had done some terrible things to me, and I had said with my mouth, nobody has ever hurt me this bad in my whole life. And I opened up the door. You can say something, and you can bring a word curse upon yourself, and you can curse yourself with the words of your mouth, and then that curse will take hold of you, and that curse will be manifested in your life. You can, I, and it's very true. My grandmother, the one I talked about, who is the best grandmother in the whole world, and I don't want to belittle her because I honor her and I love her with everything within me, and I'll see her again. She's a great grandmother, just a wonderful grandmother. But I remember one time she got hit and she was playing basketball with my, our kids, and she's, oh no, the basketball hit her in the head, and she says, I guess I'll get a brain tumor now. And I said, Nana, don't say that about yourself. And her head hurt. And then another time she fell and she hit her head and it was all bruised. And she says, I guess I'll get a brain tumor now. And she would confess a brain tumor over and over again. And she did get a brain tumor. And then when they were operating on her, they were going to operate on her. And she kept saying, I'll never wake up, honey. I know I'll never wake up and from this surgery. And I said, Nana, please don't say that. Let's say what God said about you. And she never woke up. There is power in the tongue. 
We curse ourselves by the words of our mouth. When I was a little girl, I've told you this before, she would continually confess. She'd walk me to the railroad tracks. And she'd say almost every day when she'd walk me, she'd say, honey, one of these days I'm going to get my foot caught in that railroad track and I'm going to break my ankle. And one day she did. And it was a continual process with her, the confessions of her mouth, because she believed what she confessed. She believed that negative confession. So we have to not curse us by our words. Death and life, death and life. That's pretty heavy. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. If you read the book of James, it talks about the tongue as just a little thing, but it's set on fire by hell. And it's, it's so important what we say. It's so important, the confession of our mouth, that we must continually confess God's word. And sometimes it takes everything within you not to confess death. It takes everything within you not to confess the woes. When you get a doctor standing before you and the doctor saying all these terrible things and everything negative, everything horrible, and just speaking death out of their mouth, and for you to have to believe the report of the Lord above the natural report of the doctor, for we do not look at the things which are seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And we might not be able to see the healing. We not, might not be able to see the miracle working power in our financial realm. But if we have prayed and we have seated and we have believed God for all these things, even if it takes a little while, we keep confessing the word of God and we keep seeing it. At the time when our son was so horrible and in such a mess, I, I told my mother, I said, Mom, I can't take it anymore. I just can't live in this anymore. No more. I quit. And she says, don't you do that. You lift your hands and you repent right now. And you see your son whole. You see your son praising the Lord. She says, I stand, we live down the street from her this time. She says, honey, I stand at my window every day. And I lift my hands and I, I say, I see him serving God. I see him worshiping the Lord. I see him speaking in tongues and filled with the glory of God. And so I had to get on her bandwagon. I had to repent and break the curse that I had spoken over him. And I had to repent and get on her bandwagon and believe God. And the Lord spoke to me and said, I want you to carry him in the spirit like you carried him in the natural. There's some things you've got to carry in the spirit. Some things you quit on and you give up and you've spoken word curses over it. And you've allowed the enemy to come in. Look at Job. He'd have to make sacrifices every day because his kids might have cursed God and sinned. And he did that continually because he was in fear of that. Fear opens the door to poverty. Fear opens the door to sickness. Fear. And not that sometimes just some natural things happen. But you can open the door. So we have to stay away from fear. We have death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those that love it will eat the fruit of it. Now, team members, there's another team member that we have on this team. And if you will turn to Psalm... Uh, 103, 103 and verse 19, there are angels and they are enforcers of God's word. When we speak God's word, they will enforce God's word and, and they will go about and do what the word of God says. It says the Lord in verse 19, the Lord hath prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearken unto the voice of his word. So right here we see where if we speak God's word, it puts our angels into operation. And we might have cursed ourselves with the words we've spoken, but if we repent and ask God to forgive us of the things that we have done and we have lived under that spirit of death, that spirit of fear, we've lived under that spirit, but we've repented of it, and we start speaking God's word over our life, over our children's life, those angels will start operating for us as we speak God's word. They will go and they will bring that word into manifestation into our lives, into our beloved's life. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his hosts, his angels, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. They do the pleasure of the Lord. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, Oh, my soul. Our words hold the power of life and death. Can you imagine that what you speak 
will change? If God created the world with his words, and he says, I give, I give you dominion to take authority that you can have dominion. When, when we first learned this from dear brother Charles Capps, and we learned this power of the tongue, and we got his book, The Creative Force of the Tongue, that very power of the tongue, started reading that book, and I was like, how come I didn't know this, God? Why didn't I know this? How can they hear? How can they hear without a preacher? Somebody, we have to get a hold of a preacher. We've got to get a hold of the Word of God that we can learn things, that things that they have learned we can grab a hold and learn. And, and I, I told, I, we, we were at this Kenneth Copeland meeting, and he, he was talking about the power of the tongue, too. And we went home, and we saw great miracles, didn't we, honey? We spoke the word of faith, and, and the power of God happened. And, and then the day, those of you that don't know this story, it's so awesome. We went fishing, and I hate to fish. It is the most boringest thing in the whole world. I, it must be more boring than watching football or baseball. I just don't know. I just can't imagine somebody enjoying all these things. Now, wrestling, I can handle that because it's sort of cute and fun, and they wear real cute clothes. But, you know, they wear pretty capes, and they do all these tricks and these flips. But, uh, but all this other stuff. And so we were going fishing, and it's so boring. And I had just learned about the power of the tongue, and we have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, over the cattle, over everything that creeps upon the earth. He gave us dominion. We we're made in his image. And if God had dominion, we've been given that dominion. And so we're sitting there and fishing. It was just half and I, the two of us. And I was so bored. He wasn't bored because he had to keep baiting my hook. And I kept losing the worm, and I'd pull it back out. And he'd say, don't hit me in the head with that, <laughs> you know. <laughs> We were in this little cove, and it was real quiet and boring, and the water wasn't even moving. Everything was still, and he kept baiting my hook. And I was so bored. I said, I just think I'll take dominion over the fish of this sea. This is so boring. We might as well catch some fish. I take dominion. Do you remember that, honey? True story, right? This is a true story. And so the next thing we know, all these fish started hopping in our boat, and I am screaming. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, and as quick as they're hopping him in, he's throwing him out of the boat because I'm screaming at the top of my lungs, get these fish out of the boat. And he's throwing them out of the boat, and they're coming back in the boat, and the boat is covered with all these fish. And I'm like, oh, God, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want it. <laughs> it was horrible. <laughs> I never took dominion over the fish of the sea again. <laughs> But that's a true story, right? True story. Okay. <laughs> and they kept throwing the fish in. <laughs> God can use a raccoon to, to uh, what you confess. So <laughs> we need to confess the word of God. <laughs> And we put our angels to work when we confess the word. Let's turn to the book of Matthew, chapter 9, uh, verse 27. Okay. And when Jesus departed thence, two blind men followed him, crying and saying, Thou son of David, have mercy on us. And when he was come into the house, the blind men came to him, and Jesus said unto them, Believe you that I am able to do this? And they said, Yeah, Lord. We, you know, in other words, we believe. Then touched he their eyes, saying, according to your faith, be it unto you. Now, we need faith to believe that fear is not going to come and grab a hold of us. He said, according to your faith, be it unto you. What a statement that is. According to your faith, be it unto you. According to your faith. According to your faith, be it unto you. Do you get that? Hebrews says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So if we understand that the substance is a confident expectation that we're going to receive that. So we can believe that we won't live in fear, but we're going to live in the faith of God. We can believe that with everything within us. So we believe that we fully, a substance, 
a confident assurance. We have to believe that. So he says, according to your faith, be it unto you. Our faith has to have evidence. And that is the hope, the things hoped for. And it's going to come our past. So our faith cancels the curse. Say that with me. Say, my faith cancels the curse. It's a very simple thing. My faith will cancel the curse. And remember in the book of Numbers, I don't know what time it is. Does somebody have a time? This clock is wrong. I don't want to take too long. And in the book of Numbers, we can look at that. Huh? It's 818. Oh, my. I'm sorry. We, our clock is broke up here. We don't have time to finish. Um, in the book of Numbers, we'll, we'll have to do that next week. But uh, there's so much more in this that it, we could talk about this from now to eternity. So there are some things that I will close with to sum up. Number one, you have to choose to live under the right law, and you live under the law of life. Number two, your mouth activates each law. That's number two. Your mouth activates each law. Number three, you keep your angels busy by faith-filled words. Now, these are the two things we didn't have time to go into. Praise releases God's blessings over you. And number five, prophesy over yourself. Speak the answer. So you have to prophesy over yourself. Speak the answer always. Don't speak. Don't speak the fear. Don't speak the doubt. Doubt is faith in the devil's words. We don't have faith in the devil's words. We want faith in God. The Bible says in Mark eleven twenty two, have faith in God. Let's stand up. You don't want to miss Sunday morning. Sunday morning's coming, isn't it? You don't want to miss it. And uh, those of you that know Kay and Jim that moved away, they're going to be here Sunday morning. Won't that be nice to see them? So they're going to be here Sunday morning, not just to come and visit. They, they moved to Chicago. Do, no, where'd they move to? Kankakee, near Chicago. Yeah, so, so they'll be coming here visiting Sunday morning. So you don't want to miss Sunday morning. I believe Pastor, uh, Pastor Greg's going to be here, and uh, we'll have a good time in the Lord. And then Ken Henry Sunday night. So we're just going to have a good time in Jesus. Uh, let's see, Donna, we want to pray for you. Come here. We want to pray for you tonight. We just want to speak peace over her and her situation. And we want to believe God to just touch her and uh, just bless her so much. I need some prayer sisters up here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. Come on, come on. All right. Gather around her. You know, you can get to the place where you feel so hopeless, and we just want to break that off of her. We don't want any hopelessness on her. We just want to believe God that his resurrection power will come, and we're going to come against that spirit right now. So stretch your hands towards her. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And, Father, we come against that spirit of hopelessness. We take authority over it by the blood of the Lamb, and we rebuke it. We speak the word of faith and the power and the anointing of the Most High God. Father, you can turn any situation around. There's nothing impossible for you. And we speak the very life of God, the very power of God over her in every situation. We break the curse off of her in the name of Jesus. We speak the favor of God over her that things will turn around, that her pe the people in her life will see her differently. And, Father, they'll cry out for her presence. We speak the blessings of God over her in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And there's the power of God on you right there. There. There's the power. Take the power. There he is. Okay. Woo. There. Come on, lay hands on her. Go. Go. There she is. There's the power. Nothing like the power of God. You know, when God comes, he changes so many things. Yeah, you rest. Rest in Jesus, baby. Rest right now. There's a rest coming to you. There's a rest. She's going to live here rest. Leave here rested. Yeah. Live in that rest. Jesus says, my peace I give unto you. Not as the world gives you do I give you, but I give you my peace. Let not your heart be troubled. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. There. Okay. There we go. Isn't God good? 
Isn't God good? If anybody else needs, stay here, guys. Anybody else need prayer tonight? We got some powerful ladies up here. I'd like to pray for you. Anybody tonight? You need prayer? Come on up if you do. Anybody? Okay. And you know that prayer of agreement is powerful. Anybody need prayer? Okay. All right. Oh, come on up. Come on. Come on. All right. Come on. Let these ladies lay hands on you. Scratch your hands out right now. Let's agree again. There's nothing impossible with God. Everybody pray right now. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus and we thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. God's a God that answers prayer. Nothing's impossible for our God. Yeah. We just bless her children. We bless her children, Lord. We thank you, Father. We bless her. Thank you, Jesus. Well, they finish praying. Let's, let's agree for Gregory right now before we go. And Kevin and Ellen. We'll agree for them. Father, we come to you in the name of Jesus, and we thank you tomorrow for Gregory. We speak that favor of God over him, that all those cells will adhere. It'll all take, and it'll be, it'll be done. We call it done. We ask you, Lord, that they'll be able to shut off that dialysis machine for 12 hours, and it'll work, and we thank you, Father, for that. We thank you for everything you're doing in his body. We ask you, Lord, that you give the doctors uh, a skill. We plead the blood of Jesus over him, and we thank you, God, for the word of faith over that child. We thank you, Lord, that he will live to declare the glory of God, and we will see the miracle-working power of God advance in his life quickly. Father, we pray for Kevin, and we ask, Lord, that you will turn every situation around. You will help them in the financial realm and the healing realm. You will help him operate his body the way it should be operated, that you would take the pain away, the soreness, the stiffness, that everything would function the way you created him when you formed him in his mother's womb. And we thank you for Cheryl. We thank you for their family. And we ask you, Lord, that you provide for them and watch over them. Father, we pray for Ellen, and we curse every cancer cell in her body. And we thank you, Lord, that Ellen shall live to declare the glory of God upon this earth. In the name of Jesus, we plead the blood of Jesus over everybody in here. And we thank you, Father, for our wonderful holiday tomorrow. And we bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you guys. We, we would like to thank you for joining us in today's service. And if you would like more information, come check us out at gatewayfamilychurch.com.